Welcome back to Little Bang Discovery Plus. Last time we were talking about how precious our planet is and I'm wondering how your plants are growing. So now have a little science fair with your grown up, talk about what we did last time, any additional experiments you've done and what you've learned about how precious our planet is. Today's topic is physical change and making close observations. So I would like to know what you think you already know about physical changes. So just what are physical changes? So we're looking at things like when you add an ice cube to a drink, what happens to the ice cube? It goes through a physical change. So talk to your grown up about what you think is happening there. The, the opposite is when you put water into your ice cube tray and put it in the freezer. So the water starts out, goes into the freezer, goes through a physical change, and what does it become? And another change you might experience, perhaps not as drastic as that, is when you've been in the bath for a long time, what happens to the temperature of the water in the bath? Does, is it the same as when you first got in, or has something changed? Now, the first experiment that we're going to do is having a look at the difference between solids and liquids and gases. Now, because I can't get you people up here to help me with this, I've got some teddies to help me. So I want you to imagine that the teddies uh, have linked their elbows, so they're all nice and close together. So imagine this teddy's got its elbows linked with that one, and I'm going to put a peg on and see if that will help them stay. Oh, no, nope. what about a fold back clip? Don't know if this will work. See if that will keep them nice and close. Is that strong enough to keep them nice and close? Then the next teddy has linked elbows. Put on another clip to keep them nice and close. And then the next teddy has linked elbows with this one. So they're all in really close to each other. And this is what the atoms are like inside a solid. So when something is a solid, so when water, for example, freezes and turns into ice, it's a solid and the particles are sort of stuck really close together. They can't get away from each other very far. So that's what things are like in a solid. And that's one of the reasons that solids are so hard because the particles are stuck close together. Now, if instead of linking elbows, our teddies are holding hands. So this time, we've got these two teddies holding hands. And we've got these two teddies holding hands. And we've got these two teddies holding hands. Now, you can see that now they can spread out uh, quite a bit further apart. And that means that they can move a little bit separately to everybody else. So this is what it's like in a liquid. So when water is a liquid, like the water you drink, then it can flow because the particles can be a bit further apart. And this one can move, but this one doesn't have to. But this one can move and then follow. So can you see how the teddies can sort of flow, which is what happens inside a liquid. Now, in a gas, so when mum or dad boil the kettle to make a cup of tea, and there's steam coming out of the kettle, that's the water changing into a gas. Now then, the particles are not attached to each other at all. And they can go wherever they like. That teddy's gonna disappear over there, this teddy is going to disappear over here. This teddy decides, oh, I think I'll stay here. This teddy comes over here. So the teddies can spread out as much as they like. They're completely separate. The particles are completely separate inside a gas. And so that's why gases can spread out over a big area because the particles aren't held together nearly as strongly. So they're the three states of matter solid, liquid and gas. So when we're talking about physical changes, we're talking about things changing 
from a solid to a liquid or the other way around, or from a liquid to a gas or the other way around. So now that we understand a bit about how the particles are in solids, liquids and gases, we're going to do some experiments using solids, liquids and gases. So first of all, what I need you to do is to get your kitchen scales and we're going to start out with some water in a cup. So we're going to pop our cup on there, pour some water into it. It doesn't matter if we're including the weight of the cup in this circumstance. So pour some water in and you might like to try and get it exactly on a number. It doesn't really matter. I was trying for 130, but I got to 131. That doesn't matter. So in your discovery diary, write down what your water is measuring on the scale. So my water is 131 grams. All right, now I'm gonna pop that aside and now put on another cup, but this time it is important. We don't want to count the weight of the cup, so I'm going to zero it so that with the cup on, it is saying zero. So there's no weight being from the cup being accounted for. And now I'm gonna add some ice cubes to my cup. Okay, one weighs nine, two weighs 19. That one must've been a bit bigger. Three weighs 35. I'll put in one more. So my, my four ice cubes weigh 49 grams. So I'm gonna write that down, four ice cubes equals 49 grams. Now, what do you think will happen to the weight if I tip my ice cubes into my, um, okay, I tip my ice cubes into my water. What do you think will happen to the weight now? So do you think they'll both add together? Now my if I add these together, I get zero. Okay, uh, I was expecting it to be about 180. In actual fact, it's 170. So it looks like, so my water plus my ice cubes equals 170. So I think I've done something a bit dodgy with my scales, but that doesn't matter. So write that down. Now, what do you think will happen to the weight as the ice melts? That's what we're going to explore after we've done our next experiment. So make a prediction with your grown-up. Will the, will the water being ice or the water being water change the weight? What, so tell your grown-up, will it, as the ice melts, will the weight change or will it stay the same? Have a, make a prediction. You might write that down in your discovery diary. Okay, so let's put that one aside for now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to explore things that are gases. Now, the way we can tell gases, often we can't see gases. I mean, for example, we're surrounded by air at the moment, but we can't see it. But often you can smell gases. Gases often have a smell with them. So we're going to do an experiment now, looking at how long it takes to smell the smell of a gas, depending upon how close you are standing. So you might need your, you will need your timer, uh, either your little timer or the timer on a phone or your kitchen timer for this next experiment. And there are a couple of different things you can use. You can either use a smelly aerosol and you'll need a second person to help you with this. Or you can use something that is really smelly that when you open up the lid, you can smell it. So I'm going to use this one uh, because there's just me. Now I'm going to put the disinfectant down there. I'm just going to loosen the lid, not take it off yet. And I'm going to start my timer. So this mark is only a half a metre away from the disinfectant. This mark is a metre away. You might like to do more marks. I've actually done this experiment before with um, going up to two metres away. So if you're doing using an aerosol can, 
what you want to do is stand on this spot and get somebody, or oh, you might be able to reach, spray the aerosol down on your cross or on your X and start the timer at the same time. And then wait, and when you can smell the smell, you stop the timer and see how long it took. With the, uh, likewise with the, um, I'm just gonna turn my timer on, it's ready to go. When I take the lid off, I start the timer and I see how long it takes for me to smell the smell. Oh, I can smell it already. That was seven seconds. Okay, so you can do this by standing in this spot, then perhaps putting the lid on. You might want to open the window to blow the smell away. And then you can try it again on the next uh, mark and make a prediction. How long do you think it will take for that smell to reach me now that I'm a metre away instead of half a metre away? So this is how to tell how long the gas takes to spread around, out around the room. And would it make a difference if you were standing on the other side? So that's another experiment you could try. Try it on this side and then try standing on the other side. So remember how the teddies dispersed all around the room? Well, that's what a gas does as well. It spreads out because the particles aren't being held together tightly. All right, I'm going to leave you to try that experiment. And then when, you, when you've uh, done it, write down all your times, how long it took. And you might even like to draw a graph. I'm going to show you the graph that I made after I tried this experiment. So here's my graph that I made. I've made it a big one so that you can see it, but you could draw one not nearly so big in your discovery diary. And this is the time in seconds until I could smell the smell. And this is the distance, half a metre, one metre, one and a half and two metres. And when I um, was half a metre away, it took about seven seconds. When I was a metre away, it took about 13. When I was one and a half metres away, it took about 16. When I was two metres away, it took about 22 seconds. So can you see that there's a bit of a pattern there? That the further away I got, the longer it took the smell to reach me. So I'd be interested to know if you saw a similar pattern to that. All right, now we're going to do another experiment now, looking at solids. So what you all need is a birthday candle, which is a solid, and an ice cube. which is solid water. Now, what do you think will happen to these solids when you hold them? Do you think the birthday candle will change? Do you think the ice cube will change? Talk to your grown up, make a prediction, have a guess. What do you think is going to happen? And already you can see what is happening to my ice cube because there are drips of water coming out but there's no drips of wax coming out from the candle. So talk to your grown up, try this. You might not want to hold the ice cube until it melts completely because it's very cold, um, but that's fine. Melt, hold it and see if you can get a few drips happening with your ice cube. But does the same thing happen with your candle? Talk to your grown up about what's happening and try and explain why is my ice cube dripping, but my candle isn't? Okay, so what did you decide about why the ice cube was dripping? What is it about my hand that's making the ice melt and ch change from solid to liquid water, but that doesn't happen with the candle? So is it, what did you think it was? It's probably because you've got a really warm hand and that heat is causing the ice to melt and change back into a liquid. Whereas to melt a birthday candle, you need a lot more warmth than, is, than what is in your hand. You've probably seen birthday candles melt before when they're on a birthday cake and they get lit. After they've been blown out, they're smaller than what they were to start off with because 
Some of the wax has melted and some of it has actually vaporized into a gas. So you need a lot more warmth than what your hand has got to get the candle to melt. All right, now let's have a look at our experiment with our water and our ice cubes. Depending upon how long it's been, how much has your ice melted? So have a look and see. There we go, I got it to turn on. See how much it weighs? Okay, so I was expecting, expecting it to weigh 180, but it was a bit dodgy, my results. So I don't think they're, I think I might need to do this again. Um, and the weight is similar. So, but my ice cube hasn't finished melting yet. It would be good to weigh it again when my ice cube has finished melting. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is to talk to your grown up. What have you learnt about physical changes? I mean, did you know about solids, liquids and gases before? Had you heard those words before? Did you know that it depends on how close the particles are together? Like our teddies were really close when they were being a solid, a bit further apart when they were being a liquid and then could spread around the whole room when they were being a gas. Um, did you, what, did, what about your experiment with your ice cubes and the water? Did you expect the weight to change? Did you get an expected or unexpected result there? And what about your gases that you smelt? Did you experience them spreading around the room? No matter how far away you were, eventually you got to smell them because that's what gases do, they spread out around the room. So reflect about those things. You might like to write some stuff down in your discovery diary. You might like to do a drawing of your ice cubes in water or your um, gas experiment. Or you might like to do the experiment with your teddies and draw teddies close together being solids bit further apart being liquids and spread out being gases. So you can put all that in your discovery diary. Now, the extra activities we've got for you this time, you might like to make some icebergs for your bath. So here I've got an iceberg with some toys trapped inside it. So you might like to put this iceberg in your bath and release your toys. The way I made this iceberg was I half filled the container and then put the toys in, let them set in the ice. The ice went solid and then I put more water in the top and froze it for a bit longer because these toys were floating. So if I had have just put them in with a full container, they would have just floated around the top. So that's one type of iceberg you might like to make. I've got another one here, which was an attempt at making a rainbow iceberg but it wasn't 100% successful. But it was a little bit. So I've got the colours of the rainbow. Oh, it's not bad actually. It looks better now I've taken it out of the container than when it was in the container. So I've got the, the seven colours of the rainbow there, making a rainbow iceberg. So you might like to make that one. Um, I don't know about melting it in the bath though, because the food colour might um, might get on you, which won't be a problem. It'll come off eventually. <laughs> so you might try melting that in the sink, perhaps. And you could time, how long does it take to melt? So that's a rainbow iceberg. The other, the next thing that you can do is get some water and a paintbrush and do some painting on the driveway and see what the water does. Does it stay there or does it disappear? If it's disappeared, what's it, where's it gone? What's it changed into? So some water painting outside on the path or the driveway and see what the water does. And the next one is um, quite fun. And you can see my hands have gone a bit red from my rainbow iceberg, uh, is to make ice cream in a plastic bag. Now for this, you'll need a towel. Uh, now on the um, equipment list that you've got in advance of the class is the recipe, but I'll go through it again now. So in a Ziploc bag, you want to have um, one tablespoon of sugar, which I've already put in, 
and one teaspoon of vanilla, which I've already put in. And to that, you add half a cup of full cream milk. So not light milk, but full cream milk. Okay, so there's my half a cup that I've put in. Now, you want to squeeze the air out of your Ziploc bag as much as you can, doesn't matter if there's a little bit in there, and seal it up as well as you can, because you don't want any of your ice cream to escape before it's ready or before you're ready. And then give it all a bit of a squish so that your sugar dissolves. Okay, I can feel, oh, there's a little bit in that corner still. So my sugar is dissolving in there. Now, you're going to make a bed of ice and salt to freeze your ice cream. So put some ice cubes in a container like a lunchbox. So some ice down the bottom. Now you're going to use a half a cup of salt. So the salt helps to make it colder so that it will freeze. So we've got half a cup of salt. We're going to sprinkle about half of that in. Now, to make sure that our ice cream doesn't leak, get another Ziploc bag, make sure that's as closed as it can be. Get another Ziploc bag and put it in. Once again, try and sort of squeeze out the air and make sure this one's really well Ziplocked. We don't want any of the salt. We're not making salted caramel ice cream, we're making vanilla. And we want to make sure that that is zipped up really well. Okay, so we've got that zipped up really well. Now we're going to nestle our bag. Actually, I need to get a bit more air out of there. Nestle our bag in on top of the ice. And then we're going to put in some more ice. And some more salt. And we're going to put on the lid. Make sure it's down properly. And then we're going to wrap it up in a towel or in newspaper. Because now we've got to shake it for 10 minutes. And it will be really, really cold to hold. So you need something to insulate your hands around. Now, I'm not going to stand here and shake for 10 minutes. <laughs> but here I have got some ice cream that I made earlier. So this is how it will look. This has melted a little bit because it's been sitting there over there while I've been doing this session. This is how it will look. And once it gets so that it's all solid, it's ice cream and it's ready for you to try. So get a spoon and spoon some into a bowl and enjoy your ice cream made in a bag. Okay, so that's the end of our session. You've got some extra activities that are good fun to go on with and some thinking to do about how things change from solids to liquids to gases. Perhaps you could walk around your house and point to things and say, that's a liquid, that's a solid, this is a gas, and explore physical changes until the next session.